All right, Victorum Gaming fans and SPQR fans, so this is another video covering the generic missions for the game. This one is called Sacking the Village, and as you can see from the map here, there's definitely um, quite a bit going on. So, uh, as, as is per usual, um, you know, uh, equal size warbands, one player is nominated to be the attacker, and again, need to point out certain heroes, uh, special heroes, um, sometimes uh, talents and stuff like that uh, can trigger off of who the attacker and defender is, so um, keep that in mind. And as they say, uh, randomly in a campaign, or randomly, or you know, in a campaign, it'd be like the player making the challenge um, tournament will probably just have people roll off and stuff like that. Uh, again, randomly, but um, so definitely another attacker defender mission. The defending player places one unit, or sorry, places one building for every unit in their warband within their deployment zone. So um, this one, um, again, for tournament play and stuff like that, um, they might. Um, you might want to limit the number of buildings and stuff like that because, again, depending on the size of the tournament and stuff like that and how many units someone po uh, puts up, you know, if they have, like, 30 units, um, there's not necessarily going to be a place on the battlefield to put 30 whole units or expecting a player to have that many buildings to place is also a little bit crazy. So um, so some of that might need to be modified for certain types of play. But uh, in either case, um, so they put that in their defending zone, and as you can see, that's kind of off towards the back here in kind of like a uh, rectangle. The attacking player deploys all their models, and then the defending player deploys his. So this is a little bit different from what we've seen before, where the defender is always putting their stuff first. So this is the attacker setting up all the way, and then the defender um, gets to react and deploy appropriately. However, the attacker does take the first phase. So, um, so it's kind of a split there as far as the advantages go. So the defender, again, gets to see what the attacker is doing, uh, but um, they do know that the attacker is going first, so they should also deploy according to that. Now, um, it's not just a sort of normal straight line that the, the attacker has here. It's almost like a U-shape, so you get a little bit of a flank uh, or advance on the, the two flanks there, which, um, as they show, there's actually 12 inches further than the, the sort of longer line um, that you have there. So... Um, and then um, up to basically six inches uh, in from the table edges there. So not necessarily that much room, but um, nonetheless, it's 12 inches further in. Um, now, again, probably would be good here, especially with the buildings that the defender has, having some sort of like village set up. Um, so definitely some intervening terrain um, just to make it a little bit more interesting, but also just a little bit um, tougher on the attacker. So... What do you have to do in this mission then? So special rules. Uh, an attacking unit can sack, which uh, is basically either burn or pillage a building, by performing four special actions while in contact with it. So basically you're going to have to take two turns to do this. Um, these actions need not be consecutive, but they do need to be performed by the same unit. So you can't just have like one unit do a special action, move off, and then have another one do it. That, no, that actually resets the clock on that, basically. But basically you're going to be spending two straight turns on a building, and that's basically to torch it. And then the way you win, the attacker wins by sacking at least half the buildings in the defender's deployment zone. The defender will win if he can prevent this. So in some ways a little bit similar to the livestock mission uh, as far as like having to steal half the livestock here, you're trying to um, destroy half their buildings, um, and the defender just simply has to prevent that. So knowing that, um, you know, you definitely want to, um, if possible, put your buildings as far away from the attacking force as possible, and also in just uh, other ways, uh, making it a little bit more difficult to access. But also, again, you need to leave some room for maneuvering and things like that for yourself. Um, and it doesn't say anything about, you know, how close or how far away the buildings have to be from each other. But, um, you know, certainly wouldn't really look cool if, like, all these buildings are um, just, like, touching in a straight line or something like that or something that wouldn't look normal. But, again, if this were more of a competitive thing, then, um, you know, that uh, that does come into play there as far as, um, you know, how you're, how you're allowed to deploy the buildings and all that. And, again, um, for bigger size games uh and especially like in a tournament setting it can be kind of um unrealistic to force a, a player to potentially carry like a dozen or more buildings with them and you know like what size does a building have to be to consider a, a building or something so um there could certainly be a little bit more description provided here so uh that would probably be something for like organizers to hash out and stuff like that and wouldn't necessarily be um, a great uh, tournament mission without a little bit of modification, but um, and certainly that being said, um, again, you have to having to spend four actions uh, to do that. 
for special actions to basically torture building. So um, you definitely want to consider that um, in, you know, as the attacker, um, what units can you afford to basically um, park by buildings uh, and have them spend their actions doing that while you're trying to deal with the uh, enemy's um, own units who are obviously going to be trying to shift you away from that and wiping you out so that um, their buildings don't get burned. Um, uh, on the defending side, you might try to bait the opposing player, let him maybe have a couple of buildings, get them out of position, and then wipe those units out um, to try and get a numbers advantage because, again, um, equal size forces, but the attacker has to do all this extra stuff, basically wasting, or not necessarily wasting, but spending several actions um, doing uh, something that doesn't involve killing the uh, defending units. So um, it doesn't, again, provide a turn limit or time limit or anything like that. So, again, those are things that you might want to agree upon. Um, but considering that a unit has to spend basically two turns, you probably want a, a hefty turn allotment. So maybe something at least like eight to ten turns or something like that or more. Um, beyond that, uh, so certain things that the attacker can do that definitely will benefit them. So units that have access to horns here would obviously be really good just to have that extra action once per game. Uh, talents and things that let people, that units have immediate free actions or even heroes that um, find ways to get extra actions and stuff like that. So those are all things, right? It says a unit has to do that. Um, it doesn't necessarily specify whether that's a minion or a hero. So, um, you know, if you have a couple of heroes who um, can be, um, you know, a little bit more sneaky, a little bit less of a target, uh, you know, you can get those up to buildings and start uh, working on burning them and, you know, um, go from there. So uh, overall, pretty cool mission, pretty uh, uh, hectic on both sides. Definitely imposes a lot of uh, things to consider and um, worry about there. So, um, again, it might be good... Um, for tournament play and stuff like that to sort of agree on a like a standard size uh building um uh that would be required uh, to uh, to be used for this and maybe even not necessarily one per defending unit because again that can just um you know that could be cool but it could also be kind of ridiculous depending on the number of uh, buildings out there, so um, maybe like a standard size or something based on the point size of the game. Um, but overall, um, still another a pretty cool mission, a little bit different take on that um, livestock raid. So here you're just actually raiding a village. So um, so the next one uh, that we'll look at is Fall of Heroes, but this one has been Sacking the Village. <laughs> 